Hello people and welcome back to part 5 of our Cities Skylines build guide. First of all, before we start this episode, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you for 100 subscribers. I think at the actual time of this video now we're actually at 101, which is crazy. I never ever expected to reach even 20, 30, 40 subscribers and to now be at 100 is just crazy. <laughs> like. Honestly, you guys don't know how happy that makes me. Thank you so much for all the support, the likes, the comments, everything you guys drop. It means a lot. When I get a notification on my phone that someone's after a comment, it always makes my heart race. I'm so glad that you guys enjoy the content. Um, it really means a lot. I just thank you so much um, for the support. Uh, I do want to do a uh, kind of a 100 subscriber special. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. Uh, we're going to do an extra long episode today um, as a little thank you, uh, but that's not going to be the 100 subscriber special. Uh, that will come in its own video. It might be a little compilation, a little bit of a montage of what we've done um, since we started up this channel back in April of this year. Uh, but, yeah, let me know if you guys want anything particular, but otherwise I think I'm just going to do a nice little, uh, almost like montage and compilation of everything we've done. Uh, but that's enough soppiness for right now. Today I want to start working on a couple of things. I'm hoping today that we're going to hit the next milestone. Um, which is going to give us the leisure specialization, which is going to be really crucial uh, for developing our beachfront here. Uh, I really want to try and work on this today as well. Uh, but whilst that is happening, uh, well, whilst we're waiting to get there, rather, we have an enormous demand um, for industry right now. And that is going to come in the form of forestry. That's going to sit here. Now, right now, this vanilla interchange, which is perfectly symmetrical thanks to... Um, Paradox and Colossal Order that developed this game. Um, this is perfect. I'm going to have to destroy it, unfortunately. <laughs> and place in a new interchange. Now, this isn't going to be anything too complicated. And I am going to turn this into a time lapse, which is something I haven't done on the channel before. Uh, and hopefully you guys can just follow along with what I am doing here. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and cut back in uh, after the time lapse of reforming this interchange. We're just going to do a simple bridge interchange. Um, so there's going to be, uh, let's have a pop off the thing here, there's going to be a simple bridge that's going to flow over here and then this is going to have two uh, connecting sides either way and that's going to allow us to set up our forestry commission uh, in this side of the map over here. So without further ado guys, let's uh, get a nice little shot of the interchange there. There we go. And let's go. it guys there is a brand new interchange transformed really simply now this thing can't handle enormous amounts of traffic so we're just going to help it out a little bit uh, with some lane management from uh, the traffic manager mod uh, so let's go ahead and quit this guy 
I wonder if it's actually better for me to upgrade these into... Yeah, so I am going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, a couple of one-way roads. And upgrade these into two-lane slips. So that should work nicely. And let's pop ahead into Traffic Manager. Let's make sure that everyone is okay with what they're doing. Uh, so these guys can either head in this direction. Or to here. And then these guys can either come here or here. And then these guys into here and here. And then likewise on the other side. We'll mirror that there. And then this lane just for turning. That's super. We actually want to make this lane come into here. And uh, disconnect from that one. There we go. So now you can see everyone's got turning lanes. These guys can come in and turn that way. If they want to turn this way, then they have to go over there. And then, likewise, these two lanes here are for turning back onto the highway. And then we can just imitate this on this side. So this lane is for turning and for straight on. Why is this way can be turning and then over here as well. And then these guys can come straight up. And then these guys can uh, turn into here or here. And then this guy is only for straight on as well. There. Okay. So that should work. From my very limited experience with Traffic Manager. Uh, that is going to allow our traffic to flow a little easier. Uh, across these intersections. But like I said. Uh, this interchange won't get a vast amount of traffic. Purely because the island is fairly small. Um, and this industrial area isn't going to be producing enormous amounts of truck traffic anyway. So let's go ahead and map out a new industry area. Again, suggestions down in the comments below for the name of this new forestry commission. You guys are more than welcome to come ahead and name it. Okay. An anchor region is going to be the name that the game will give it. And then let's go ahead and grab our six lane roads. And kind of plan our descent down. So a nice little marker for me is to come out by five markers and we know we get to five when we see that second blue line appear here so you can see that'll be four and then five where the second marker appears and then i'm going to move down uh, we're just on the, the lowest elevation step right now and then i'm just going to repeat that pattern until we hit the bottom and then you're going to get a nice smooth descent you know there's no kind of crazy uh, what would be relatively unsafe inclines. So I think that was just kind of plan out what's going to happen here. Um, might be nice to introduce a bit of a roundabout in here, maybe. Um, do you want a roundabout? Yeah, I think we do. And then we're going to go ahead and actually connect this up via. Uh, a couple of little slip lanes here. And then delete this middle one. And just make sure that our roads are facing the same way. There we go. Everyone's happy. Uh, so I think I'm going to use just the regular four lane roads uh, coming off the roundabout. And let's go ahead and drag in uh, a road to the end of it here. And then up to here, probably. Now, I do want to keep a bit of a spare space for processing buildings. So, I think I'm going to have this little back corner here um, as processing, which will be quite nice. So, we'll map that up to there for the moment. And then, let's go ahead and drop in our forestry building, which is forestry main building. So, this should look quite nice. Let's have this. I think I probably want this on its own little road. Maybe we can make it on a nice little tree road. Uh, let's have it come off the road here 
and that by 10 like that, and that should. I have to place this, that's going to cost us 20 grand. And that's going to give us a sawmill, a small tree plantation, and a small log yard. So let's have a look at these. So obviously this is our uh, extractor building. This is going to give us the raw resource. And I think I'm just going to place these. As parallel as possible for right now. So there we go. Let's have a look what else we unlocked. We also had a sawmill. Now this is going to take that raw resource and turn it into timber. Um, now let's have a look at the stats on this. This doesn't produce any pollution. But it does have noise pollution, which for this uh, area of the map really doesn't matter. It's an industrial area, so we don't need to worry about it. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all these trees in the middle of the roundabout. I'll make a bit of a rock feature in there in a minute as well. Um... Let's try a little bit of a... Symmetry right now. Let's go ahead and grab the sawmill. This is going to sit right here. And that is going to start producing raw forestry products for us, which is going to be wonderful. So, right now, this area has no water, which is fine. So, we'll map him in. And I'm going to bring this guy straight down like that. And then he's also going to need power as well. Now I'm wondering where the best place to connect him up. Probably from here. I'm going to have him cross straight over the highway. That's fine. We can delete that rock. So we don't have enough money right now. Hopefully we can take out a loan. No, we can't. So I'm going to cut back. I was actually wonder if we can... Uh, refund a couple of these roads that should give us the funds uh, of course I'm running with the game on pause Boom. so they're hooked up to the power grid and they're hooked up to the water grid so when we hit play now we can kind of get some nice shots of this uh, I really like the forestry buildings because they blend in perfectly well with the surroundings uh, and this will be a nice little uh, money maker for us as well when we do have again notice the theme of our industry area is sat right by uh, the highway they have immediate highway access so there's going to have no trouble let's get uh, a nice shot of the new highway in action let's see how they flow and see what traffic manager stuff we can try and do with them they should be okay i think yeah for right now anyway you can see the volume of traffic coming into the island is really small so there's kind of no need for anything fancier than this. Obviously, when we get into the kind of the bigger downtown stuff, uh, this place will require. Uh, well, the highway interchanges will be required to be a lot bigger. So everyone's happy. Everyone's flowing nicely. Everyone's sticking to their correct lanes. The traffic lights are working okay. We may take the traffic lights out at some point and uh, maybe change them to timed or give way signs coming off the highway. We'll have to see um, how it performs, but it's a little bit janky here, isn't it? But that's what you play, get for playing without move it, I'm afraid. Uh, there isn't a lot else I can do about that, but that's not too bad. I'm happy with that. But Anchor Sawmill is currently at minus 472 in profit, uh, which is fine when we get more workers and start producing more buildings. Uh, this place will start making more money for us, which will be great. So let's go ahead now and maybe plop in. So it has the workers, which is great, but it does want more resources. So let's go ahead and grab a couple more of these small tree plantations and then let's try and drop these in. I do want to make sure that we save some room as well for the larger production buildings that we will unlock as this place levels up it doesn't make sense to me that these a tree plantation would need water surely they would just take water from the ground in a plantation like this or maybe they are kind of artificially watered maybe someone who works in logging can confirm that 
Well, I don't know, considering like these trees here don't need water, but these ones do. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, let's have a look at a little rock feature we can maybe put in the middle of this roundabout. How's that? Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And then we'll place in some foreign artificial redwoods. Kind of in and around this thing. Just like that. And there we go. Excellent news. So this guy's complaining of not enough raw products, but it does usually take a couple of minutes for your industrial areas to sync up um, with the kind of delivery process uh, and how things kind of receive different goods. But they will eventually receive it because this guy's going to drop some off. And then he's going to head back out. Fantastic. So it seems to be working nicely. Everyone's flowing. Everyone's happy. Fantastic news. Okay. So we had a suggestion last episode from Bill and Ted who would like this farm to be renamed Skywalker Farms. And I'm guessing someone is pretty hyped for the new uh, Star Wars movie. So there you go, mate. There's Skywalker Farms now firmly implemented into the city. Oh no. This house is burning down. And it's spreading to my park. Come on, fireman, do your job. Oh no. I hope they managed to put that out. Schwartz Park is burning down. People don't seem too phased. I mean, they're walking right by this inferno. And the... <laughs> the, uh, the firemen seem to have not cared. There's a tiny bush on fire here. It looks as though this is the end, guys. This is the end of Frem of uh, of Bugusia as it slowly begins to burn down. Let's see if we can maybe contain the fire here by deleting these trees. But uh, yeah, so this is a good chance to discuss how fires work in the city. They will obviously spread based on what is near them, um, and they will leave this kind of scorched earth effect uh as the fire dissipates but that will go over time it looks horrendous right now but it will disappear and also your trees will grow back naturally you don't need to replace them uh, but it is just something to, to bear in mind there are different things you can put in place to measure this um so the fire watch tower is really good for kind of keeping uh forest fires intact and uh, for example if we were to get one over here uh, that might be a little bit of a of a disaster, but uh, we can see the, uh, the thing is making money now, and uh, it's really not too far away from its first level. Okay, yeah, so a little bit of scorched earth going on right now. We'll uh, we'll wait for that to regrow. Uh, but we did also have a suggestion: I recycle lanes. So this would be a good time to discuss cycling within your city. So right now, if we take a look at our bus line here, we can see we have a lot of people waiting at all the different stops uh, 76 on this one specifically and then we also have uh, the buses aren't exactly full but you know they are quite busy and um, so what I'm going to do is introduce a little bit of cycling into the city now there are two ways you can do this there are cycle roads with bicycle lanes in multiple different sizes you can see there's some here and then there's some here as well so in the six four and two lane road variations However, under your path section, you also have this thing here, which is a bicycle path. So this will allow people to cycle around your city um, a lot easier. So I think I'm going to go ahead and implement them now. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the cycle lanes to flow right through the middle of town. So kind of following the same route as the bus. Just going to go ahead and upgrade all of these. And I think I'm going to switch to a smaller lane here. And cycling is a much greener and healthier way, obviously, for your sims to get around your city. Uh, so they can be really helpful. Now let's go ahead and grab. So you kind of almost want to map out individual cycle routes on the roads. Um, that can be really useful. And then we'll switch back to the four-lane version right here. Now, because this is like heavy traffic, I'm actually going to switch the bicycle lane to a bicycle path right there. And then I'm going to link them back through this middle bit with more bicycle lanes as well. And you know what? We'll probably have the main street to have bicycle lanes too. Again, and I want this kind of island to remain quite green and cute. I don't want it to become too industrialized uh, with a lot of kind of big, heavy, grey roads. So let's go ahead now and put in our cycle lane. In Friendwood, we did actually operate a bicycle highway 
and that span through the city. So I definitely want to kind of keep that theme going. So I'm just going to paint this along here. And then this is going to follow the road exactly. And then let's kind of draw it in here. And go a little bit freeform. Uh, probably up to there, I would imagine. And then we'll go ahead and place... Oh, no. <laughs> that is not what I wanted to do. The bush strength was a little bit too intense. Have you ever seen like the most dense redwood forest ever? There we go. So there's a nice little border there now. That's maybe a little bit too many. Let's go ahead and delete the odd one there. Uh, we'll have one... Yeah, and then yeah, there we go. I think that's a little more, a little more realistic. So we'll now begin to see, as we kind of focus in and around these roads, that our people are beginning to cycle around the city. So this is an alternative to them using public transport, uh, which does, in the end, cost us money. However, it also encourages them um, to stay healthy, I suppose. Um, but it also keeps traffic off the roads. That's a, that's a really nice shot, actually. All the cyclists got a bit of an Amsterdam vibe going to it. And uh, Anchor Sawmill has reached level 2, and that's going to unlock the biomass pellet plant, a furniture factory, a sawdust storage, uh, the worker barracks, and a small tree sapling field as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, because we still have an enormous demand for industry right now. Uh, so here we go. So worker barracks, uh, these are going to increase the worker efficiency by 5%, up to a maximum of 100%. Um, I'm not really too keen on the barracks. I kind of see them as a pointless building. I'd never really get too much benefit out of them. might be different for you guys, uh, but we, we might place them. So we do now have a biomass pellet plant, and this thing is a fair size. It isn't the smallest thing in the world. But you can see that it produces both noise and ground pollution, so I don't want this anywhere near my trees. Um, because it's going to ruin the aesthetic uh, kind of feel that I'm going for here. So I think now is a good time to actually go ahead and build out that kind of separate production area that I was talking about earlier. Uh, let's bring him up to here. And then the road can come up this way. And let's have a look at some kind of little road networks here for... Uh, separate production buildings so a biomass pellet plant so I just need to push my industry area out just a touch it's probably a good idea to bring it all the way up to here actually and paint that in as well okay let's have a little look see here so here we have a biomass pellet plant, and this is going to take our raw forestry product and turn it into paper. Now this guy would not be hooked up to the water grid. So he's going to need to be hooked up. And he'll also need um, a little temporary power link. So he gets hooked up into it like that. Super. Very good. So that's now going to be producing as paper. So up here you can see... We are now producing plant timber. So it's probably actually easier to look at this information in the industry area. So we are now taking our raw forest product, 33 tons of it to be precise. And we're now producing paper through our uh, biomass pellet plant. And this will update once it begins to produce that. Uh, and then we're also producing one ton of plant timber. And then we'll see these start to go up. So the next uh, production, the next level of requirements now we have is to reach... 350 workers. Right now we only have the capacity for 316, so we need to place some more jobs around here. Uh, and then we also need to produce 1,500 resources, uh, which will come naturally anyway. Uh, but we did unlock a new resource, actually. So let's go ahead and check that out. Um, or a new uh, extraction building. We have these things here. Small tree sapling field. So this is going to produce us 6,400 units a week. And it looks pretty similar to the um, small tree plantations, apart from, you know, 
it's tree saplings so these quite haven't grown yet these are waiting to become these and you can kind of use these to kind of break up the pattern so say for example if I wanted to um, have one we'll plot that there and then another one there uh, let's actually remove that put another sapling field in and then maybe um, some more of the trees in but you kind of see you know it really breaks up the I mean I, I don't I don't mind the look of the forestry areas but just kind of from the bird's eye view you are getting you know there's a break in the pattern isn't there you can kind of see it from there and you can you can imagine as you expand your forestry areas that you know you're going to see this different patterns and stuff it looks as though you know these have been harvested and then replanted to wait to be coming to these and it just makes it look a lot more realistic in my opinion so here we go, this guy is heading off, he's exporting paper products even though we aren't actually producing any just yet because they have no raw uh, forestry product but that will change uh, once he receives a delivery so that's going to be good fun. Uh, we also unlocked another cattle shed but like I said I don't want this farm to get any bigger than what it already is. We do have space for another one down here as well uh, so I might actually look to implement that at some point again we do still have a ton of industry demand and i want to kind of stick to using uh, these industry specializations uh, let's take a look at some of the factories which we haven't really talked about yet so factories take kind of each industry area has a couple of different factories associated with it so for example you know we have a petroleum refinery right here which is obviously going to unlock from uh, leveling up our oil industry areas when we eventually come to build those um, so these things are going to take the products that you produce. So for right now, let's take a look at uh, the furniture factory. So you can see here, if you look at the little uh, infographic that pops up, it's going to take our plant timber and paper and turn that into a diamond. Now, it's not specifically referencing turning it into an actual diamond, but that's going to reference the fact that it's turning it into goods, sellable goods like you know furniture, stuff that comes out of a furniture factory. We also have here a bakery, and then this is going to show us that you know it's going to take our meat, crops, and flour, and turn that into bakery goods. So pastries, baguettes, etc. You know, different kind of things like that. So these can be really cool, and they look awesome. They're also massive. So this one right here isn't that big, obviously. Uh, but as you get down here, like this, uh, the petroleum refinery, which we can't view right now, is enormous. Uh, we also have uh, the car factories, big two. Uh, the food factory is a decent size, uh, and then we also have uh, and the shipyard as well, is uh, is pretty pretty massive. So I did actually just notice a little bit of heavy traffic build up there. So I think what I am going to do is actually upgrade these guys into high speed roads. They are not the ones I want to use. Um, two lanes in the same direction. That's them. There we go. So that's going to allow them to move a little quicker around. You'll see they'll just start flying around that roundabout right now. This guy's still complaining of not enough rural forest street, but that's fine. So let's just reference our cycling again a little bit here. Let's take a look at the districts that we've got going on. Uh, in this place right now. Okay. So we do have the um, hillside square has expanded significantly to encompass all this residential. Uh, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and take Woodland Square and expand this into this area up here uh, to meet Victoria Hills and then that's going to come down and uh, select a port this area around here and then probably up into here as well there we go okay so right now Woodland Square again uh, I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and rename this district into something uh, a little more Tasteful. Let's go for. I don't know. What would be a, a nice name for it? Let's reference our old Let's Play. Let's 
go for Fremwood Parks is the name of this new area. Now, if you remember, we had all our cycle lanes and bike paths coming through here. And there is a policy that we can put in. I think it's city planning. So under our policies tab, we have city plannings. And then we're going to go to encourage biking. And then when this policy is active, most citizens would prefer bicycles over motor vehicles. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. So that is going to increase the number of people using our bike roads. And because there is bike infrastructure in place, we're going to see uh, quite a uh, steep incline in the number of people using bikes. So I do want to have a look at maybe some city-wide policies right now. So we're making pretty much five grand a week. It's bouncing up and down as days go by. Now, power usage, I'm not really bothered about. We have uh, more than enough power. I think we may need another power plant soon, or we can increase the budget. Uh, but that's going to be reduce the electricity consumption by $5 per building, which, as you can imagine now, there is a lot of buildings, so those $5 is quickly going to add up. Uh, also, a similar thing for water usage, but we're not really that bothered right now. So that's okay. Uh, smoke detector distribution, which significantly reduced risk of fire. Uh, this is going to level up our buildings as well. That's going to make them really happy. Uh, definitely don't want a, a pet ban. That's not really nice, is it? Um, recycling again. When we start getting kind of a lot of different um, garbage pile-ups around the city, that's when I might look at uh, putting recycling in. So parks and recreation. This is going to increase the... Parks and Plaza's budget by 20%. You may remember we did actually apply this to Fremwood Parks uh, because it does have a few parks in there and I wanted to increase the land value around those. Recreational use, probably not right now. We may make recreational use along the beachfront actually because I'm pretty sure it increases tourism, doesn't it? Yes, it does moderately increase the tourism and skills out. So there's a lot of different stuff we've yet to do yet, and it's all, it's all very exciting. Some of the kind of city planning stuff is based on your zonings and kind of transport methods. Uh, but for right now, we won't be getting into those uh, just yet. Okay. So. We are quickly approaching that next level, and we do have a touch more commercial demand. Let's leave the game in three speed for a minute. Uh, so I think definitely want another block here. Let's kind of flesh out uh, this intersection here. And I want a little bit more kind of buzz around this area where the carousel is. Uh, and then I wonder if I could actually grab another park in here. Um, because I'm kind of thinking now, as this area unfolds around here, we're going to need uh, to have something to fill in this area between the bars and the beach. Now we do have um, a sand tool, if I remember rightly. Yes, we do, sand. So I'm just going to push this up, expand the beach up into, so literally the front of the building, so these are going to be beach front. It's going to be very exciting. Um, probably take a little bit off there. Uh, a little bit on there as well. So now I've got a nice, it's very yellow, isn't it? That is like blinding yellow. Look at that. <laughs> like that is so yellow. You've, it's like Simpsons or something. So let's go ahead and upgrade this road into nice fancy tree roads, uh, which is what I want to kind of have along the beachfront to an extent, probably up to there. Uh, and then we'll have this one. Now there is a nice road here which is the large avenue with grass, and this makes it look really sweet. And uh, Agar Sawmill has reached level 3, which is going to unlock a printing press, a medium tree plantation, and a large log yard, which is fantastic news. Um, so Sims can actually walk in, on this kind of brown section. It's either dirt or gravel or maybe just like tiled road, uh, but Sims can walk in this, uh, so that's something to note if you're planning to place them anywhere in spe uh, specific. So I want to hook this park up to... Uh, the beach area right now. Let's go ahead and turn off. Actually, we'll leave snapping on for right now. Uh, and we'll try and hook this up 
as best as we can. Let's have it down here. Now I don't want to disturb the zoning squares too much with this because we do obviously want buildings here and fairly big ones as well with the tourism specialization. Uh, so we'll go ahead and bring this here. There. That should be okay. And then probably maybe one around the back just here. Just up to there. Oh. That is not what I wanted to do. My apologies, friends. Let's turn our snapping back on. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I accidentally taken out a road. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and look at... This placement again, it doesn't look as though it's connecting quite properly, unfortunately. Uh, some of these guys have just unzoned, which is quite annoying. Let's make sure that they are zoned up as needed. Have a long one in here and one on here as well. Okay. There we go, now it's connecting up. So I'm going to place a couple of trees right now. So I want these kind of trees to be the same ones here. So I'm pretty sure that these trees are not those ones. These ones? Yeah, these ones. So I now have placed this vanilla asset. We can see the red outline of where this is going to go. So I'm going to turn my brush strength down. And then just kind of naturally expand this asset. With a couple of random tree placements. In various locations. Now if we also zoom into this part, we can see that we have a couple of little tiles with picnic benches. So let's pop back into our city stuff and grab one of the tiles. I'm going to grab this one here. And I think probably here would be a nice little spot for it. Let's have one there. And then there. And then these guys are going to have a street light. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do temporarily is we're going to have a look how the city looks during night time. Now, Pete, you can play with night time on. I don't really prefer it for Let's Plays. It isn't really. It really annoys some people. Um, so I play with it off, but your city will look so different at night. So it can be nice just to kind of kick back and watch how your city has changed in the night time. Uh, I think we have some nice flower beddage behind here as well. There we go. Let's turn this 90 degrees and then up to there as well. So already that looks much more interesting than just having a path connect up to the road like this and then leaving it like that. You know, there's already a nice little bit of theme here and already we've expanded this vanilla asset um, to make it look like it is actually just part of the city and we do have right now so this is an interesting factor we have noise pollution so the citizens are sick and let's find out where this is coming from so i think right now he is just too close to the high street so i mentioned this in a couple of episodes earlier uh, that you don't want too much commercial next to your high street and this is because i've zoned these places here so that's telling me now that these need to go we do have there we go he's gone now Across the road is okay, but like when it's literally right next door, it's uh, it can get a little bit too intense for them. So maybe we can optimize this space for another bit of um, maybe a basketball court. That's unfortunate that, that won't fit in. See, so is there anything that is four blocks wide that we can squeeze in here? Do have the community pool, that would be nice to have around here actually. D 
do have a library, which um, I'll place one of those around here. Let's have a look at our little elementary school. Okay, so we definitely need another elementary school. Uh, let's get that placed in. I'm going to place uh, a regular elementary this time. Let's have a look where our citizens are feeling it. So there's a lot of people over here that don't have the education of an elementary school. So, oh, and would you look at that? It fits perfectly in and around the path. So there you go. That's going to be perfect, and that's going to help. You see, you'll see that shoot up right there, and that's going to help level up a lot of these houses around here, and that's going to move a few more sims in. And that's going to move us ever closer to our next milestone, which is going to be nice. There we go. We're all leveling up. I am really, really... Oh, no! No! <laughs> I can't even leave it. Well, the fires. Again. Why? Stop burning down. Our city is ravaged by arsonists. So we can see now these trees are starting to come back from the fire. Uh, so you can see they do come back, but it just leaves you with a little bit of a kind of horrible scorched earth look. Um, that comes with it, but you can see that's gone now. And we actually have a much better looking house that's spawned on the corner. Uh, which is which is really nice. Okay, so it's coming night time now. This is wonderful. Fantastic news. Hate these buildings. That can go away. Uh, so I know that I don't want that building there. I'm going to make it a smaller zoning. Um, there's some of the vanilla buildings I really, really hate. These ones. These ones are not nice looking. So I know that that's going to grow in a four by a uh, in a three by four. So making that three by three is going to force a different building to spawn in there. That tends to be the way I get rid of them. And our beautiful park has been ruined, has been torn down, which is horrendous. Let's have a look at our forestry commission. So it does need more workers. And if you remember rightly, we did unlock uh, some of the medium tree plantation stuff, uh, which we can now begin to place in and around the city. Uh, I think I'm actually going to replace this one here. And draw up another road. Probably to level with that one. And I know now here that I can place a bunch of medium tree plantations. And would you look at that? It fits in perfectly. You can change the appearance of these. Obviously, right now at night time, this isn't the time to show you. But, um,. These guys will need water as well, and this is going to carry on satisfying our water demand. There we go. These guys are happy. Let's take a quick look at the budget and see how much we're making from our uh, industry areas. We're currently making 2,270, which is actually more than our commercial. And right now, our biggest expense is electricity and roads, uh, and obviously the industry areas are up there as well. Everything else isn't really too bad, but let's have a little look. A nice little cinematic look around the city right now. This high school is looking really nice against all the backlit trees. But it would be nice to see this park at night time, but uh, the Biotanical Gardens is looking excellent. Surrounded by all these little green renewable buildings. I want to upgrade these roads as well. Let's do that before I inevitably forget. Um, I want the four lane with decorative grass. So that's going to come in and replace the majority of this road around here. Apart from the cycle lane, that needs to stay cycle. That's fine. Okay, there's the new park assets we've placed. And it uh, looks as though that this uh, new park could do with another light maybe and one here as well. It's going to brighten up the area a little for them. All these nice residential streets. It's nice and quiet in suburbia at night time. Everyone's happy. It's just the odd car driving around. It's the garbage truck coming in. I love it. It's looking very nice right now, isn't it, guys? I'm really enjoying this city so far. So we now have the four lane with decorative grass that is going to be occupying... Uh, the roads in and around uh, Victoria Hills. So that's going to be really cool. 
So these guys right now, again, we're complaining that we're producing too much raw forest product. Again, we are producing biomass pellet plant. So right now we're producing three tons of plant timber. And we're producing one ton of paper and 72 tons of raw forest product. So let's have a look at what else we unlocked. Now we do have some log yards here and these are going to store the raw forestry product. Now that can be useful but um, usually I tend to use them for aesthetic purposes so maybe we can place um, a small log yard right here and this guy is just going to stockpile uh, some nice logs for us. So if any of the production buildings ever need immediate access to resources this guy is just going to stockpile forestry products and then you can then tap into it straight from there. We also have a sawdust storage as well. I don't think I want to place that just yet. Uh, let's have a look at what we need for the next level. So we have the worker capacity. And we're producing a ton of units. So we're going to be more than okay. That's going to see itself to level 4. And looks as though we are struggling with power again. I think rather than place a new plan, I'm just going to up the budget a touch. Let's bring it up to 120% and see how that affects the production. Not a vast amount, 150. It would help if I had it on a nighttime budget, wouldn't it? There we go, that's why. <laughs> I can probably go ahead and turn nighttime off right now. Um, there we go. Let's turn that off. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we can maybe hook this road up around here, I think. I've been meaning to do this for a little bit, so I'll snap it off. Um, so this road here needs to kind of bend around this little bay. And then through here. Don't really want to destroy those rocks. We kind of always replace them now. And then just kind of weave this down. Up and into. So we now have a ring road all the way around the island. Uh, and I will eventually upgrade that. Uh, into high speed road so it makes sense for people to actually use it which will be really sweet so for example you know, if you have someone here and they want to get over to this side it's going to be easier and faster for them to take this bypass road down here to get on over here than having to fight through all the different lights and traffic stops and traffic that flows through here so let's see if we can spot some cyclists I'm known around. Here's a few of them flying by. They are pretty speedy, so you have to keep your eye on them. Let's see, they're all going ahead around town. So this part of town does prefer biking now, uh, and that's going to be really good for getting people. These these houses are really nice. What level is this? Yeah, this is level four, so you can definitely see the difference in uh, level of housing when they do get into their higher levels. See the scorched earth effect is starting to dissipate right now from the edges. Slowly coming back in. Okay, but I think guys that is gonna do it. Um great episode. Really enjoyed that one today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, a like below is very much appreciated. Uh, it really helps me out. And equally as much if you didn't enjoy this episode, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Uh, it helps me gauge what you guys do and do not enjoy from this let's play. Otherwise we made some nice progress today. We have rebuilt our new interchange which is still coping fine. Everyone's flowing through. We have a brand new forestry area which is looking pretty swifty. And then we have also expanded our beach area a little bit and started to plan for next episode when we will be working on our commercial nightlife beachfront area which I'm really looking forward to getting started. There's going to be some nice looking 
buildings and paths. And we're going to have a ferry depot in here as well. Uh, so people can get on the island without having to actually use the roads. And that's going to be really sweet. And that'll probably be a nice point to transition into another village along here, maybe. There's actually uh, a ton of farmland over there. So maybe we can make a farming uh, village. Uh, and they can get back and forth uh, on the ferry. And actually leave them separated from the highway, maybe. And have them exclusively use the ferry to get back and forth. Ideas, ideas and ideas. But lots to do. Really enjoying it. I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much again for 100 subscribers. You guys are literally the best people in the world. The likes and all the comments you leave mean so much to me. Keep it up uh, and I'll keep getting out some videos for you guys. Any thoughts or suggestions on a 100 subscriber special, let me know below. I'm more than happy to take your guys' recommendations. Uh, otherwise, I think I'm just going to work on a little project in the meantime over the course of the next week or so and try and get that out for you guys uh, before next weekend. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.